Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello and thank you for joining us on Deeper, your daily Bible study. It is a blessing to come together once again to study God's Word. I am David Salazar and with me is Dr. Tim Ramsey and we will study today, Sunday, June 2nd, the lesson titled Conflict. Now, before we start, we want to ask that you will accompany us as we have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this new week that we have started and we ask as we open your word, we may be able to receive a blessing. May your Holy Spirit lead us into all truth and allow us to be able to resolve and learn how to resolve conflicts that we may have in our families. Uh, we know that many times we have a hard time understanding one another and being able to really connect, but we ask that you will give us wisdom and guidance. And again, may your Holy Spirit be with us as we seek how to solve conflicts. We pray all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, Tim, we were mentioning yesterday that uh, the issues about conflict and families, and uh, we saw the example of Jesus, how he solved the conflict with his disciples as far as who wanted to be the greatest. But uh, as we understand, you know, families through since the very beginning, we, they have gone through conflict as just as families do today. So we're going to explore today a few of these family conflicts. I know that there is some great uh, points and ideas and concepts in the lesson quarterly uh, for today. But uh, we want to see where we can get from the word of God, how we can learn from these issues in families and perhaps have clues of how we can best handle similar situations in our lives. That's really, uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Most family conflicts that you and I experience for us may be new, but truly they have been since <laughs> this fall of man. Right. <laughs> so right. we're going to look into the Bible and see how the Lord gives us guidance and maybe a few clues for that. If you don't mind, Tim, uh, starting with this, less, this interesting story that we have for today, yeah, we find the story in Genesis 16, uh, verses 1 through 4. If, so if you can flip over there sure. and I hear your, your Bible pages moving, uh, Here my go pages. to those verses and read, <laughs> yeah, and read for us. Genesis okay. 16, 1 through 4. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Not hmm. a good situation, David. Not a good situation. <laughs> and interestingly enough, you know, there is this, uh, pro you know, proverb in uh, Proverbs seventeen fourteen. The lesson brings out the version that reads, the start of an argument is like a water leak. And, you know, I in a sense, uh, the start of a problem is like a water leak. You know, the water leaks usually start very little, you know, almost just a little drop and... Many times we don't do that. We don't do anything about it, you know. But uh, let's look in this lesson, in this story that we just read, where the problem started, you know. The problem started, obviously, uh, at what point? When Sarai was not able to have kids? Is that really the issue, the start of the problem? I don't think so, you know. That's a, a situation that just was not allowed and she was beyond her control. But the problem was where she felt that she needed to fulfill something that was in God's power. She wanted to somehow, you know, not trust in the Lord, you know. So I think the main problem is when you start stop trusting in the Lord. In the case of this, of this woman of Sarai, that was the beginning. They stopped trusting in the Lord. And so she said, you know what, let's, let's get a, an, another, let's do it another way. Let me bring, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Hagar, Hagar to be my husband's wife. Now, 
you know, David, interesting me, enough. Yeah, go let ahead. me just interrupt for a second because I think you're making a really important point, and that is that in this story with Sarai and Hagar mm-hmm. and, and Abram, the um, what seems to be the obvious problem is really just a symptom of of a deeper problem, and as you said, that deeper problem is a lack of faith in God, basically. Um, and mm-hmm. the same thing, of course, is true, you know, in each of our lives today and in our families. You know, we often get on these crazy spin cycles, you know, like the the drying machine or the washing machine. <laughs> they they mm-hmm. spin and spin and spin, and we keep coming back around and around again to the same problems. They keep cropping up, and we wonder why. I thought we dealt with the, what we dealt with that last time. Well, we dealt with the symptom, but maybe we didn't deal with the underlying issues that are causing the conflict. And uh, obviously, it's the underlying issues, just like with a physical disease. You've got to deal with that underlying problem, and then the symptoms will disappear. Absolutely. And, you know, let, let's try to be objective here. How many, uh, there were three people involved in this situation, in this problem, let's put it that way. Um, and, and we like to, as humans, we like to usually find who's the, the most guilty. You know, we may agree <laughs> that we are all guilty, but when we're in an argument, in a, in a, in a little trouble, we like to pin the, you know, the person that has the most responsibility. Again, in a way that is trying to say, it was because of you doing that, that's how I reacted kind of thing, you know? Mm. So um, in this lesson, though, uh, you know, we could say, well, Sarai was the one that didn't have any faith, but then, you know, she's the one that started. Well, Abraham, who was, a, you know, the, 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 well, the father and the, well, not the father, but the main person, the patriarch there, he complied. He didn't mm-hmm. object to this this mis- misleading of Sarai. And then we have, of course, Hagar, who she was not, you know, at all against the idea. And she thought, hey, this is how I get ahead in life. You know, if I have a child with my master, then, you know, I will be not longer a servant. So all of them, you know, in a way acted wrong, all of them responsible. And I think that this is one of the main things that we need to look into this story is like, how would the Lord deal with that? You know, would, will he be saying, you know what, you are more responsible, you're more, you know, and, and kind of try to put, you know, uh, I don't know, the blame on someone that has the most responsibility. I don't know. I don't think that's really how we're to solve the issue. And, you know, but I believe that we are to see that, you know, one of the main things we do is that when there's an issue, everyone is responsible. And I think that that's right. that is where we should start focusing in when we have problems, you know, arguments. But let's continue. What happened with the story? Because we just started with the first part. Let's go with the second <laughs> part. Uh, read for us five through nine, Tim. And Sarah, I said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, behold, thy maid is in thine hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And the angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarai's maid, whence camest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarai. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. Hmm. Well, you, we let's see here. Do you have this problem escalating into a bigger problem? No longer are they no longer happiness and peacefulness in the home by keeping the order that it was established. You know, when you do something, and, and this is a problem, when you do a sin, when you allow conflict to come, order is disrupted, you know, and it's what happened in the home. Uh, and now we have the issue where Hagar is actually taking things, you know, looking at her, at her, well, at her, you know, at her eye, as her master, as a, as a way that is not, you know, and with respect, she's looking at her like an equal. Mm-hmm. And sadly, that is not how it's supposed to be. So we see the issue, but how does Christ or God really solve the problem? And I think this is where we have to look into the points to the, for today. How can we see God given a solution to the problem? Um, and I think, you know, have you thought about, Tim, give us your ideas. What are your concepts on, on how the Lord solved this problem? Because this is getting worse and worse. I mean, imagine she no longer wants to work for her mistress. I mean, she wants to leave and she's 
trying to, uh, you know, uh, well, Hagar's not the only know. one who <laughs> Hagar's not the only one right. who wants to leave. Sarai wants her out of the house too. Uh, so before we look at the Lord's solution, you know, we did, need to look at what happens here. Uh, Sarai's solution, and maybe Hagar was happy to leave as well, but the human solution was to get rid of Hagar and send her out of the house. Um, Abraham mm-hmm. seems to think that's a good idea as well. Now, it is interesting that some years later, when Isaac is finally born, um, that ends up being God's solution as well. You know, Hagar and Ishmael, it's time for them to leave. But at this point in the story, it's not God's solution. And, um, right. you know, God's solution for Hagar when he speaks to her is basically go back and you need to submit. Uh, and we talked about this, was it last week or several days ago in our lessons? You know, submission is, it's not easy. It's difficult. It, it, uh, it runs against our human nature, that selfishness and pride. But in this case, in this story, at this time in their lives, this is exactly what Hagar needed to do. She needed to submit herself uh, to her master and her mistress. And um, I'm sure it wasn't easy for her to turn around and go back home. But uh, this was God's solution at this time. Thanks, Tim. You bring uh, the, the, the key and the answer is submission, willingness to serve again. I mean, and, and this is, I think, you know, uh, we see the point that in the story, God's solution was to find the servant who who felt she no longer should have been a servant anymore because she was the wife or was having the baby of Abraham. But God, to put things in motion, to set again the tone of, of, of happiness, bring peace back to the home, she, he goes to her and says, you need to submit yourself to your master, to your mistress. And and this is kind of, you know, I, I know that we no longer live in a slave or a servant type of society. We're not advocating that. But it is important to see that the principle remains the same. If we are to find or look for solution, you need to come with the humble spirit to be to be a servant. I think I think that if when you have a problem with your spouse or with your children or or whatever you know, if 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 the person that wants to initiate the healing comes to the Lord, God is going to show you the same thing. Go and submit to someone else. Go and surrender yourself. Surrender your 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 pride. Your you know you, even if you think you have the right and you are right, if you come with a humble attitude and humble experience, I believe healing will come as a result. And um, you know, the today's society, we see that no longer there is that concept. Nobody wants to have that lowly servant type attitude. You know, you want to be a master, you want to be a, you know, a, a chief, a director, a manager. Nobody wants to be the servant. But truly, this is the key, I believe. Well, you know, David, I'll just share a principle I've found to be so often true in my own life when I'm trying to understand the right course of action. <clears throat> what God's will may be. Usually God's answer is uh, the one that runs contrary to my ideas, my plans, or my will. And, you know, it's not always the case, but very frequently God's solution to an issue or a conflict is the solution that does not come naturally to us. And um, all the more reason to continue praying, of course, every day, but uh, su- submitting ourselves first to God so that we are willing to follow his leading. Amen. Amen. Well, we are running out of time. We thank you so much for allowing us to come to your home and to your job or even as you drive. We ask that you will continue to uh, study together and we look forward to study with you tomorrow on Deeper. May the Lord bless you. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.